Welcome to number four of Blacks in the West. This is the final part, right? Last time we talked about how black, the black middle class can move into Sugar Hill. What it didn't do is solve most of the problems for the black community. Police brutality, lack of access to health care, and it didn't stop Malcolm X from being assassinated. Even though all these strivings have been happening throughout the 1900s, by 1965, we get the Watts Rebellion. The biggest rebellion we had seen in the 20th century causing over $40 million in damage. Racial covenants had finally been ruled illegal by the Supreme Court in 1948. Right? But yet, individuals were still discriminating in the housing industry. Rumford Act was passed in 1963 and said that, you know, you can't discriminate in housing. What did California do? One year later, 1964, they passed Prop 14 that repealed the Rumford Act and basically legalizes, again, discrimination. That was a smack in the face of the black community. We rephrased the term the Watts Rebellion. People wanted to say it's the Watts Riots. In the United States, riots meant that it was white people attacking black neighborhoods and often uh, kicking us out of them and are killing us. Think of Tulsa, Black Wall Street, right? This Watts Rebellion was black people standing up to all the issues that they were going through and saying, enough is enough. We are going to destroy all of this because we're tired, right? You guys won't hear us any other way. We've tried the legal routes. We've tried the different organizations, institutions. We've been building ourselves up for decades and we are stuck and it's getting worse. The Watts Rebellion blows up and it's a defense in this war against oppression. See, in the 1930s, during the Great Depression, the U.S. government, you know, had the New Deal. Poor white people out of poverty. A lot of those uh, benefits were not extended to the black community. So, you know, we were kind of left in the dark. After the Watts Rebellion, you finally, in the black community in L.A., get some of the services that we should have originally gotten in the 30s. We get them in the 70s. 66, we get Charles Drew University Medical School, King Drew Hospital in 1972, we get Ujima Village in 1972, a mixed income type of place. Some had market rates, other, other rents are subsidized, and it's supposed to be a black hub. The problem is that only half of it was actually accomplished, right, which was the first half of the housing. The second part was supposed to be a giant mall. That way in Ujima Village, right, this black uh, apartment hub, but also have a place to work and shop. So the black dollar would be able to circulate. Dude from California ends up being president of the United States and Richard Nixon cancels all that stuff says no to the second half of Eugene Village. So what happens is it's only the apartment complex that's there. And eventually what becomes Magic Johnson Park. The last concession we get out of the Watts Rebellion is the election of Mayor Tom Bradley. We get our first black mayor in Los Angeles. And so even though Tom Bradley, he did his coalition building, uh, the Watts Rebellion was really a big signifier, a shift in the political schema of Los Angeles and said that we need a black person in office and we need some real change right now.